Maybe you've seen cowboy action shooting on TV or maybe one of the gun rags and have found some interest in it. One of the things this segment is going to cover is about the costuming and what you can expect at a cowboy action match. One thing I want to discuss first is the costuming. I want everyone to understand what a legal costume is. All required for sash shooting is a pair of Levi's, a long sleeve button shirt, and lace up work boots. You just can't have the lugs on the side like hiking boots, but any lace up work boot, that's all you need to get started in cowboy action shooting. Once you shoot a while, you can go ahead and develop a costume of, of your liking. Some people are very much into the costuming, some are more into the shooting. This is a big umbrella in this organization and everyone is welcome. So you pick what you want to do and get out here and start shooting with us. Let's talk a little bit about what you might need for cowboy action shooting. The things you're going to need are two single action revolvers, some way to hold them, some type of holster rig, something to hold your shotgun shells, a lever action rifle, and a shotgun. And the shotgun can either be a double barrel or a Winchester 1897 pump with an exposed hammer and there's some aftermarket guns that is copying that, which is also good. Another thing that you're going to probably end up needing is a gun cart. The gun cart is for hauling your junk around, is what we like to say. So you'll need a gun cart. Now what to expect when you go to that first match? The first thing you ought to do is introduce yourself to the match director or to whoever you see is kind of ramrod or just walk up to somebody. You'll be shocked how nice the people are and how they'll take you in and mentor you all the way through the match. Now, what you're gonna see when you get there is an unloading table, a loading table, you're gonna see a man timing, you're gonna see three spotters. And then someone's gonna be reading the stage and telling you what order you need to shoot that stage in. Most of the stages in cowboy action shooting have specific orders and they're all different. So just go through, listen to what they have to say, somebody will walk you through it, and then at that point you gather your guns, you go to what we call the loading table. You take the amount of rounds you need to load your guns, you load them under supervision, they'll say you're good to go, then you'll, as you work your way up to the loading table, it'll become your turn. At that point, they'll call you up. The TO or the timer operator will be right there with you and he will assist you through the stage. Just let him know you're new. It's not a problem. We've all been new. We all had our first stage. So just don't worry about it. So go up there and shoot, relax, and enjoy it. After you get through shooting, you'll take your guns, you'll go to the unloading table. At that point, someone will be there to assist you to unload to make sure all your guns are clear. At that point, you take them back to your cart. You're done. It's a very simple process. And it's something that I think you'll really enjoy because the people are just absolutely fabulous in this, in this sport. Another thing that you can do is go to sasnet.com. I very strongly advise that you join the SAS organization, that Single Action Shooting Society. You'll get a rule book that gives you the basic rules. You'll have a lot of fellowship there, and they also have a member-only section on their website with tips, uh, video tips, and just different things that you can use. So come on out, join the crowd, have some fun. Let's talk a little bit about the most commonly used equipment in cowboy action shooting, and we'll start with the guns. The one thing you need to know about the guns, most of all of them from the factory is a little bit stiff, and they probably need some sort of action work done to them so they're easier to shoot, to have a better trigger pull, and they're just a more competitive gun. Uh, let's start with this rifle to begin with. The most commonly used rifle that you'll probably see in cowboy action shooting is a 73, and there's also a 66 model. That's a brass frame, but it operates the same way. This is my personal gun, and I've modified it. Uh, it's got a short stroke kit in it, which makes the, short, uh, the stroke a lot shorter where you don't have to come down as far as you're levering, uh, so it's a faster gun. The 66, same thing. It's had uh, spring changed in it, and it's just been slicked up to where it's a lot faster and very smooth. The second most commonly used gun will be the Marlin 1894 Cowboy. This is also a gun I shot for years, and it's, it's very slick. But if you'll notice, it's got a lot longer stroke than what that 73 had on it. There are a couple of people around the country that are short stroking these to where you can get them up and make them a little faster gun. They are cartridge length Pacific, 
but this gun's a 357 slash 38 and you can shoot either one out of it. And this gun has to be shot in what a category called B Western. So this is another common gun you'll see. Let's move to the shotgun. One of the shotguns that was real popular several years ago, maybe not quite as popular today because of the way we're staging our guns at most matches, but this is a 1897 Winchester clone. This particular model is a Norinco that's been reworked. But there again, it's very smooth. The original 1897s are, are really nice guns, but they, they take a lot of work, and they're normally a more expensive gun than this. For cowboy action shooting, they're tools to me, and I do work the guns hard, so this gun serves my purpose. And this is what I personally shoot is a 97. Let's move on to the double barrel. This is one that you'll see a lot out there, and they call them little coach guns. That's with the short barrels like this, you're able to move around and maneuver them through windows and doors real quick. And these guns also take a little bit of polishing. One thing that you'll notice is right in here, everybody's beveling the barrels. And what that does is allow you to take those shells and put them in smoothly. That is normally squared up right here and they're harder to load. So that's one of the things that you need that you need done on the double barrels. Plus, they need to be to where they'll open very easy. Sometimes from the factory, there again, they're stiff and you have to break them open. So smoothing the gun up makes it easier to operate. The other gun that you're seeing, especially in the classic cowboy category, is a hammer double. It's the same thing as a double, except of course it has exposed hammers on it. And you can start the stage with the hammers cocked. So your first two rounds are going to be exactly like a regular double barrel. But any shots after that, after you fire that gun, now you open it, you're going to, you can load it, you're going to have to cock the hammers. So that's the difference in the guns between the double barrels. Uh, the most commonly used pistols in this game will be the, either the Colt style gun, uh, or there's a n numerous clones out there, or the Vaqueros, the Ruger Vaqueros. Uh, these guns right here are my personal USFA rodeos, and they're a Colt style gun. And the difference between a Colt and a Ruger, with a Colt style gun, you have to put the gun on half cock in order for the cylinder to spin to where you can get to it. On a Ruger, these are the older, larger frame Vaqueros. I've had these for a number of years. And this particular gun, you just have to open the loading gate and it spins. Now this particular gun also has what they call a free spin paw, which you can add to it. The new Vaqueros actually have an option to where you can remove a screw and make them a free spin. And that just allows it to go both ways. On a one shot reload, that's a lot quicker. Okay, let's talk about some of the things you might need to go along with those guns. The one thing I highly recommend is for the long guns, while you're carrying them around your cart, because most places we shoot, very dusty. So what we need is gun covers. What this does, you just put them over your guns in the gun cart, and that keeps the dust out of your chambers and uh, out of your actions, and it just uh, makes your guns operate a lot better with a lot less cleaning problems. With the bang and clang in this game, uh, shooting against steel, you'll want some kind of hearing protection. Uh, any kind of hearing protection will work. I personally wear these little old orange safety plugs. I can, you can just roll them up and stick them in your ear. They work really well. Uh, there's a lot of people out there, you can get the molded ear plugs that actually fit your ears, which is another good way to go. There's a lot of different kinds of uh, ear plugs you can get, you can just find a set. But you do need some sort of hearing protection just to protect yourself for the long haul. Another thing I'd like to talk about, personally I, I wear glasses and I have to have them if I want to see what I'm doing with anything, but there's a difference between a regular eyeglass and a shooting eyeglasses. On the shooting eyeglasses, this is my personal pair, Side shields are a very good idea because you do get a little bit of splatter back in this game and you don't want a BB or something coming in the side of the glass and lodging in your eye. If you, you can wear the wrap around safety glasses, that's okay too. But if you wear a prescription uh, eye, eye glasses like I do, what you want in a shooting glass is the right eye focused at like 40 inches anywhere from 36 to 40. I personally like 40. 
and the left eye, I'm right eye dominant. What you want here is this left eye for infinity. What this does is give me a good sight picture. I can see my sights with my dominant eye. If you shoot both eyes open, what that does with this one is allow you to get the field of view. And it takes a little bit to get used to these. Anytime you, once you get a shooting glass, you want to put them on 30 minutes before you shoot so your brain waves will connect. And because it does give you a little bit of depth perception problem when you first put them on. But that's, it's a very good item if you wear glasses. The last thing we want to talk about is the leather. You gotta have some way of holding the guns and you need, also need a way of holding the shotgun shells and extra ammunition in case you have a reload on the stage or you kick one out on your rifle and you need to reload to, to make up for a miss. Uh, my personal rig is a two strong side, which is what this is. And what that does is allow me to draw right gun, put it away and go left gun. Now, depending on the stage, I may draw my left gun first, I may draw my right gun first. I, personally prefer this because it gives me, I feel like, more options on which way I want to move or what hand I want to go to pick something up with. Another real common holster uh, configuration is one with what we call a cross draw. As you can see, if this was on the, on the belt, it has sets at an angle. There's a rule in SAS that you can only have at a maximum of a 30 degree angle. Most holster makers, and Kirkpatrick in particular, they, they build them at a 22 degree angle. That's in case, so if you end up, and your belt comes down at an angle with this on there, it's where you wear the holster. If you buy a 30 degree holster, and you have a slight bend in your belt like this, all of a sudden now it's gonna be over 30 degrees. So it needs to stay 30 degrees and under. But this is a real common rig. Next thing you need to have is somewhere to hold your shotgun shells because you're going to be shooting a shotgun at every stage. This is a, a Kirkpatrick a shotgun belt that I helped design. And uh, I shoot two strong off the right side, so that's the reason I have doubles. You can get them in singles. There's a lot of holster makers out there, and uh, there's quite a few quality holster makers out there, so just pick what you like. There's another thing, you can wear a slide down here to where you can put your shells. A lot of people will take this buckle and turn the rig completely around and have the buckle on the back, and that way they can put a slide right here. There's two different types of belts you can buy. One, this is called a taper belt. I personally like it because it's easier for bending and moving. And another one's a ranger belt. That's where it stays the entire width of the belt, and one side goes in under the other, and it's that width all the way across. I don't like that quite as much because it just kind of binds you as you're trying to move. Uh, my personal rig, it's a Kirkpatrick rig, and it has what we call self-tensioning screw right here. Or, I mean, not a self-tension, you gotta tighten it yourself. But what that is, some people like their guns loose, some like them tight. With this screw here, you can tighten it or loosen it to whatever tension that you like. This little knife right here is something else you'll see a lot of people using. In the 73 rifle, if you happen to have a bad ram with a bullet goes back into the case and it locks the rifle up, this little tip right here is called a screwdriver knife. You can go in and clear that rifle up on the line and continue on shooting. Now the Kirkpatrick rig you can get in different configurations. They got B Westerns, they have what we call the crotch holsters, which is basically two cross draws, one here and this one facing this way. But like I said, there's quite a few quality holster makers out there, so just pick what you like, buy one time, buy right one time, and it's going to save you money in the long haul.